Right guys, it's Ash here, bringing you episode 3 of Tips of Starting Fever 13 Ultimate Team. And I'd like to say thank you for the support you've given me throughout the series so far. I never actually would have expected the support. Almost 100 likes in both episodes. Well, with the first one's on like 120, the second's on like 80 plus. So I'd like to say thank you for that guys. And please keep supporting me throughout the rest of the series. So this episode we'll be looking at teams I will recommend to you to make at the beginning of the game. Prices will be at the premium at the very top. So basically I'm just going to get used to this episode to just tell you what teams really I recommend using and in the background obviously it's just show some players I think you should basically look to, into getting when you start the game but obviously the ratings might be different but some of these players I would definitely recommend at the beginning of the game if like, the ratings are pretty similar but anyway let's get into the kind of teams you should be building so really you should be building kind of low rated like fast player team I know most of you will be thinking oh basically you're telling us to make a sweat team with like Gabby and Ben but I'm not saying that at all all I'm saying is that what I've heard about Fever 13 is that movement is key attacking intelligence is in the game which means that the fast players will be very good because they can make movement off the ball e.g. Messi, Ronaldo obviously not going to get these at the beginning this means players probably like Delfonso, maybe Gabby, people like that, or Brighton for Aston Villa. <laughs> I'm using too many Aston Villa examples here, so Oldham, Gay, Lung. So players like this really will be very good because they've got pace, and this means movement will be easy for them. People like Heskey, if he's in the games, he needs to find a club, but having Heskey up front will not be good at all because he's, he's slow, so that means his movement off the ball will not be good at all. You'll be waiting for ages for him to find space, to be fair, against some of the defenders like Louise and Billy Thiago Silva and players like that, so there would be no point having Heskey up front. I would really go for kind of some like really talented, fast players, e.g. Brighton, Oldham, Wingy, Lung, players like that, really. Delph, if he goes up to a gold, but I don't know if he will. I don't know how good he did last year, but... He might go up, you never know. And really, these teams will make it so you get matched up against people who are kind of fair rated as well. So you become up against people you can take on. Most of you subs are probably beasts at FIFA. So you probably be able to take, you probably be able to beat people if you're in a fair game with them. Because if you're against someone with, let's say, a 75 rated team, you have a 75 rated team, but you're, you have faster players kind of up front attacking, like attacking wise. You probably odds are will win if you're a good FIFA player because you will be able to pick off a nice little through ball and basically finish it if you're very good at finishing. And really, I recommend not spending over 20k on any player the first month, month and a half, probably towards November, because prices will be guaranteed to drop because there'll be a lot of happy errors which and a lot of double chance, which me, will mean basically that a lot of players will come out in packs and this will definitely just cause a decrease in the price of that player. And this means if you spend 20, over 20k in the first two or three weeks, you'll be definitely be losing money. I'd, this happened to me on FIFA 12 when I brought Schweinsteiger. I think I don't, I think, I don't know what rating he is. I think he's 87. But I brought him. Look, man, my team looked good, to be fair. People were asking me, oh, how did you get him? And things like that. But then he, when I turn, when I come to a game, he was really rubbish. He didn't perform at all. Slow, sluggish. Pass wasn't even the best. So I kind of let down. Some of the oh, like really high-rated players I kind of let down most of the time. There's only like a couple, like a rarity that some of them are really good. Unless obviously FIFA 13 changes a lot. But in my opinion, the lower rated teams are very good to play with. E.g. having like Old and Wingy, ST. With like having like someone just behind him like Bent or like I'm trying to think of other examples like Lukaku. Because these are very talented footballers who are kind of like really good in FIFA. They've like got nice pace, nice shot, even nice heading like Lukaku has. Anyway guys, I'm hoping you liked this episode. If you did... Please leave a like. Show the support you've shown in the last two episodes. Very grateful. Also, comment what you want me to look at next episode, please. Give me some ideas. And also, as you've been doing the last two episodes, just uh, like all inter we're interact as well. Interact like giving tips to other people what you think will be best to do first month, two months. And also, subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Anyway, guys, have a nice day.